Hello there once again, audience. More specifically, hey Charlie, how you doing? This video is dedicated to you. You've been working real hard. I've seen it. I'm sure plenty of other people have seen it, and I feel like you deserve something special. So this entire video is just for you. If you're the only one who views it, I'm 100% okay with that. Now I know how you like bolt action rifles. There's going to be a couple of bolt action rifles here that I'm sure you're going to absolutely envy, envy me for having. There's also going to be some peacocks. You're going to hear a lot of peacocks whenever I start firing because there's a lot of peacocks around here. So just bear with the birds. Bear with the birds. All right, let me show you what I got for you today. I went out and I picked four of my favorite uh, bolt action rifles. Right here we got a Turkish KKL Mauser. This one specifically is a 1938 model, but it was issued in 1942, I believe. Yep, 1942. This one is chambered in 8mm Mauser. Right here we have a classic Ishvex, or Ish Ishkvex, however that's pronounced, Russian Mosin Nagant. Uh, 1938 model or something. 19, well it was issued in 1942. I know that one for, that one for a fact. I'll include the actual name once I remember it in the uh, uh, video. Then we got another Mosin Nagant. This one right here is a 1947, but this right here is the M44. They both take the uh, uh, same type of ammo, but this one right here is a considerably shorter carbine and has quite a deal more recoil, as I'm sure you could guess, from being much lighter than the original length Mosin Nagant. And then right here we have what I call old sketchy which is a 1916 Oviedo Mauser. This one right here is chambered in 308. It used to be chambered in 7mm, but it was converted by the Spanish back, way back when, whenever they tried uh, uh, becoming more modern, I guess you would say. Unfortunately, they did not really believe these rifles were able to handle the 308 capabilities, or over in Europe, there was 7.62x51, which was a little bit lighter of a uh, compressive force than our American 308s. So you shouldn't try firing modern day 308s through that thing. It will chamber and it will fire, but modern day 308s sit about 6,500 PSI or 65,000 PSI in the chamber. And these were rated for about 50, 52 to 55, I can't really remember. So I'm actually firing some very cheap versions of 308s. These sit at about 48,000, so it is safe to fire the cheaper uh, ammunition through this firearm right here, versus trying to fire the newer stuff and having the gun blow up in your face. But enough about me talking. I got a microwave out there, and I got plenty of ammunition. So we're gonna test on each gun on that microwave. All right, the first thing that I'm going to point out is I'm wearing Tactical gym shorts. It's very tactical. <laughs> and they are gym shorts. I'm sure that it's freezing cold where you are because you're literally on the other side of the planet. But here it's like 105 degrees and very, very humid. So it's a little warm out here. And there's tons of bugs. All right. I've elected to start with the, the nicer rifles and kind of work my way down to the bottom of the barrel. So, right here I got the 8mm Mauser, and I have some original Turkish uh, full metal jacket ammunition. I'm going to have to clean my rifle after this because I'm not sure if this is corrosive or not. But I do have it on stripper clips, because I know how much you love your stripper clips. And that slides right in, and this thing's ready to fire. There's the peacocks I told you about. They're going right through this microwave. <laughs> I'm gonna hit the water. That was fun. A lot of Mausers, I've noticed, do not have... Uh, a lot of times whenever you're out of ammo, you can't close the bolt. Well, you can close the bolt just fine whenever you're out of ammo. Which is... Personally, I don't like that. If I'm in combat and I can close the bolt, I think I have another round, pull the trigger, there's nothing. I'll get myself killed. So that's our 8mm Mauser. It's got very nice sights on it. 
Uh, very accurate rifle. Uh, the sight on the back stretches out to looks like 2,000 meters if I had to make an assumption, but I've been wrong before. Alright, this time this time I got my uh, the nicer of the Mosin Noggins. This right here is the full-sized uh, 1938 something. Something along that line with its name. I do not have any stripper clips for this one. So unfortunately I have to take my time and load three rounds in manually. Works just as well, just takes a little longer. Not everyone can be a stripper, you know? This one does not fire nearly as well as the Mosin does, or as the Mauser. Uh, the trigger on this thing is, is garbage. Like, anyone who has fired a Mauser and a Mosin knows damn well the difference between the two. Well, there's a big difference. Again, they're just going right through the microwave. This gun kind of looks like an awkward broom handle, doesn't it? It looks like something that you'd use to clean your floors. But instead, you're cleaning out resistance. I'm going to hit the water again. This ammo is a lot cheaper than the 8mm Mauser ammo is. That's one of the reasons I like it so much better. I'll fire this all day long, and it won't cost me near as much as it would cost me to fire the Mauser all day long. Alright, up next we have the M44 carbine version of the Mosin Nugent. From what I can tell, this is also Ishvesk, or however that's pronounced. I-Z-V-H-E-S-K, or however that's called. <laughs> however it's spelled. But same ammo, full metal jackets. I got three rounds. I'm going to go ahead and put the bayonet up on this thing. Just as soon as I can get it. There we go. So, I'm going to fire down range. Two at the microwave. One in the water again, just for giggles. The bolt on this one is much smaller than the larger version. The sights don't go out near as far either because of the shorter barrel. And the fireball that comes out of this thing is pretty cool too. I don't know how well that fireball is picking up on camera, but I can see it plain as day, even out here in the middle of the sun. There's three rounds of this one. Personally, I think this one right here goes very, very well with my next rifle that you're gonna see. Pay attention to it. All right, this rifle right here is called Old Sketchy. I've named it accordingly because these things are absolutely notorious for blowing up in your face. They are not meant at all to hold the modern day 308 ammunition. That's why I'm using these very cheap underpowered 308s. This does take stripper clips, but I do not have any Oviedo 308 Mauser stripper clips because they are very difficult to find for this gun. The sights are also very off on this gun, so it's a very cheap gun. It's in the United States market right now. They can be found damn near anywhere. You can pick them up for dirt treat. I picked this one up for like 80 bucks. Fires 308s down range. Haven't had a malfunction yet. Occasionally, it will pressure stick though, but that's to be expected from a rifle this old. <laughs> Kicks like a mule though. 308s and this gun, I know it looks really light, but it's lighter than it looks. I'm going to hit the water this time. This right here is one of those instances where the 308 or the Mauser doesn't close whenever you're out of ammo. I have a 30 out 6 somewhere. I believe it's in my gun closet. Maybe. <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, 30 out 6 that does the same exact thing. It took me the longest time to figure out why the chamber wouldn't close. But these are my four favorite bolt action rifles that I have. The reason that they're my favorite is because they're cheap, easy, and very powerful and very destructive. I do have a 30 out 6, like I said. Actually, I have a couple of 30 out 6s, uh, but I don't have any 30 out 6 ammunition. That's why I have not fired the 30 out 6 for you, so I apologize for that. Anyway, I'm not quite done, but 
that's the bolt actions for you. Alright, you don't have to tell me. I know this is not a bolt action weapon. But who doesn't love an AK-47? This right here takes a 762 by 39 like most of your AK-47s do. Well, technically this is an AKM Type 47. But I have no idea how much ammo I have in this magazine. But I know a great way to find out. I believe I had that much ammunition in this thing. Anyway, I'm going to go shoot some more, but I doubt that I'll actually record it. Normally, whenever I record, it's for entertainment purposes only. Make sure that if you handle a firearm, if you watch this video, you handle it safely. Charlie, I hope things get better for you. I know times are kind of tough right now and you're working your ass off. And I do hope that uh, this video did make things a little bit better. The rest of you guys go out and have a fantastic